Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and or my podcast, whatever you are listening or watching on. Um, welcome back and welcome back to myself because it's been a little while since I've been on and recorded anything. I really needed to step back and take a little time for my mental health as well as be there for my family. Um, I've had a lot of struggles this past you know, couple of months and I needed to, you know, focus on learning more about myself and learning more about, you know, how to help my mental health as well as just being present with my family. Now that my kids are out of school for the summer, we're doing lots of stuff. If you can't tell my shorts, we're going camping more and we're just doing a lot more things that we really needed to do as a family. So I thought it was the perfect time to come back though. I have lots of fun things to say and um, yeah, so let's just go ahead and get right into it. I apologize, I am uh, getting over a cold so I am a little stuffed up still so don't mind that. Uh, the allergies and air quality have been terrible the past couple of weeks. So, yeah, not the best. But anyways, first and foremost, hi, if you're new here, I am uh, Faith. I am a stay-at-home mom of three. Um, I have three sons. They are ages seven, three, and five. And yeah, I am a wife. And my calling has always been to be a stay-at-home mom. I also run a small business. Uh, I do tumblers and t-shirts. It's kind of, like I said, small, but um, it's something I enjoy, so I continue to do it. My nose is dry, I apologize. Um, I also do a little bit of influencing on uh, some platforms. I have, um, I'm an ambassador, sorry. I've been ambassador for Nerdy Nuts almost a year now. So, you know, that's something I'm super passionate about. Check out my channel if you want to see all that stuff. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into all the different things I have to talk about. So, first and foremost, my newest diagnosis with my mental health. So, I have been in therapy for well over a year, probably closer to a year and a half, two years. And, you know, there was a lot of different things that I couldn't quite figure out about myself that I really struggled with. And it was always so frustrating because there was things that, you know, I was very forgetful. I know I'm a mom of three, so I just chalked it up to that as well as, you know, I'm, I have anxiety and panic attacks and all of that kind of stuff. My life is kind of crazy all the time. So I was forgetful all the time. But, you know... I realize as I think about my past, I've always been very forgetful. That upon a lot of different things, such as trying to do different tasks, has always been extremely difficult for me. I apologize for the back noise. I am in my yard and we live in an association, so we have a lot of background noise, but I love the scenery out here and it just makes me so happy, so I wanted to film out here. So I apologize for the back noise, but anyways, <laughs> I have a really hard time starting and finishing tasks, laundry, cleaning the house. Um, you know, when I start things, I always go full fledged into them. And then if I don't have instant gratification, I immediately just like, nope. And I'm onto something now. And, you know, I always just thought this was my personality, this was my character. And after some time in therapy, I realized this isn't something normal for everybody. You know, I've struggled with some bouts of depression and, like I said, panic attacks in the past. And it all just has led to this, upon many other things, has led to my therapist going, you know, I think you should look into ADHD. So I did. <laughs> You know, you all go on TikTok and scroll TikTok once you find something and you're like, oh, yes, this is it. That was me. Like, I went through all this stuff and I relate so much to ADHD. It was insane. So I am more of a um, 
person that tries to do things without medication. I'm not a huge fan of medication, so I'm doing my best right now to cope with it without medication. So I figured I'd come on here and tell everybody, you know, about different things that I have learned to do to help me out with my ADHD and what I suggest to you to help with your ADHD if you deal with that. Or if you don't and you struggle with these things in general, what you can do to help yourself as well. So first thing would probably be I have implemented a calendar. So I I know this is something super simple, but it is simple and it does work really well for me personally. I went to my local Walmart and for eight bucks, I was able to get a um, big, which I have gotten little ones and I've gotten big ones. And personally, I like the ones that have big spaces to write in. So I got this one for $8 at Walmart. And, um, you know, they have lots of them, different colors and stuff, but uh, eucalyptus green tends to be my color. So um, I got this one. And I just, you know, write down all my stuff in here, any notes that I want um, to remember, any dates, because I am terrible. You don't know how many doctor's appointments I've last minute been like, oh, I forgot about this. I have to cancel now. Or, you know, I've missed this. Oh my gosh, like this is so irritating. Um, all because of, you know, forgetfulness. And... It's just so frustrating because, you know, they don't understand and they get angry and then I get angry at myself and it's just a whole ordeal that I don't love. So getting yourself a calendar or, you know, if you'd rather note something like that, you know, there's lots of apps you can use on your phone or an iPad. I personally find more success in writing things down with a pen and paper, but there is a lot of different um, apps that are free on your iPad or your phone that you can utilize if you're more of a technology person. Um, yeah, I don't have one specifically that I use on my iPad, like I said, because I'm more of a pen and paper person, but there are tons and... I'm sure if you did a little research on them, you could find one that you love as well. So that would be one of my biggest tips to help out with like organization. You can also use a pen and paper and a notepad to just write down all the information that you find that, you know, you need to remember or whatever they may be. Lots of different methods you can use to remember appointments and other important events that you may not want to forget. So, let's go into number two. Another thing that I have figured out makes tasks more fun for me are to-do lists. So, a lot of the times people think that to-do lists are really scary and that was me. And my therapist is like, well, why don't you just try when you have to do a bunch of things instead of like having this list of all the things you have to do make a to-do list with like little check boxes and make it fun i was like okay you know what it's not gonna work but i'll try it so i went in and i you know tried i tried the to-do list on my ipad and it just didn't work for me i liked whiteboard a whiteboard or chalkboard so i got a whiteboard for my fridge and i put on the to-do list all my stuff and then I put the little check boxes next to it and every time I finished a task I put a check mark that also meant that I didn't have to do everything today that I could come back and do them tomorrow if I needed to but I could do them in importance or for my energy level at the time because really if you are not hummingbirds if you are not listening to your energy level most likely your tasks won't get done properly and you'll end up going into ADHD burnout if you have ADHD or sometimes you'll get so overwhelmed by the amount of tasks that you won't do any of them and then you'll just end up scrolling TikTok or whatever it may be that you do. I find myself when I am in ADHD paralysis um, that nothing gets done and I end up just wanting to veg out on the couch and 
not talk to anybody, not do anything, and it just sucks. And then I feel terrible, and it's just like this really t terrible process over and over again that always happens. So I did implement the to-do list, and I've done it enough times to say that it works for me. I physically will like start usually from the smallest task to the biggest task, biggest task, because that is what makes me feel better because I am an instant gratification person. So I prefer to go from smallest task that I know I can get done in the shortest time to the biggest task. Once I get those things done, then, you know, I can cross them off and I feel really good. And by the end, I have enough energy to finish them all because I'm excited to see everything being done. So I highly suggest if you are a pen and paper person like myself, get a whiteboard, put it on your fridge or put it on your wall or whatever and do your little to-do list. And it's okay and tell yourself it's okay. If you don't, if you don't get those tasks done today, they'll always be there tomorrow and you can do them tomorrow or whenever you get the energy to do, but have some have some have some grace for yourself because sometimes our energy levels are different during the times of month our energy levels are different during the times of day and it's okay if you don't get it done because it'll always be there tomorrow so that is my second biggest tip third the thing that i struggle a lot with as well is remembering to eat and drink it sounds really stupid but my brain works at hyper speeds and so as soon as I see a test that hasn't been done that I need to get done that is what my brain is at food and, and drinking mainly water I drink a lot of coffee um but food and water food and water are my like biggest tasks making sure like there's lots of apps I do use an app for that making sure you take your medications if you take medications um drinking water and eating food is a big thing because at the end of the day, if you haven't eaten anything, your brain is not going to function correctly. You haven't drank anything, you're going to be super dehydrated and that's going to affect your daily life. So getting an app or writing down on paper or having somebody remind you, you know, my husband tends to remind me, have you drank today? Have you ate today? And if I have it, having that support system to tell you, you know, you probably should stop and eat or drink, whatever it may be is really important as well so support system is great um i have a lot of people in my life that love me very much and appreciate me and just are willing to give me daily reminders because they know i struggle with things and it's just really great and i would highly suggest if you don't have a support system that is totally okay you can be your own support system with tools and tricks um as well fourth thing is self-care self-care is so important adhd paralysis and burnout are huge they happen. I get them. A lot of people with ADHD get them. Um, and preventing them is really important. Giving yourself some self-care is super important. And knowing that it is okay to take a break when you need a break is part of self-care. You know, doing things you love, finding things you love, like <laughs> encouraging yourself when you do find something you love, even if it's not going the way you want it to, that it's okay to continue to do that and not everything is going to go perfectly. Finding time to take breaks is so important and so necessary. It is just very, it's a very good thing to do. So reminding yourself that self-care is needed and to set that time in your calendar once a week, a couple times a week, once a month, whatever you need to just rejuvenate and take care of yourself. Um, it doesn't have to cost any money. It can be free. There's lots of fun stuff you can do free. And there's lots of fun stuff that you can do that costs money if you like to do that. Um, taking time to just rejuvenate and take care of yourself. Because if your cup isn't full, then you can't pour into others' cups as well. So that is another big thing that I think a lot, if not everybody, needs to implement into their life as well. So I'm actually going to wrap this video up because this ended up being a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but I could talk about this for ages. There's so much stuff that I have learned about myself as well as I continue to keep learning um, that if you guys want another video or podcast about ADHD and my ways of 
you know coping with them or tips and tricks that I can give or if you guys want any videos about anxiety depression um, or a stay-at-home mom anything like that leave it in the comments or you know whatever if you want to email me I will stick my email down in the description whether this be on the podcast or YouTube whatever you want if you guys want to send me a message or leave me a comment about things you want me to talk about I do plan on you know being more active on here as well as I can be as a mom of three and a wife that I will try to make as many videos as I can for you guys um, on these topics I like to hear feedback from you guys so I, like I said, if I'm passionate about a subject, I can talk about it for days. So I could definitely make more videos about this if you guys like it or want it. Um, or podcasts, I guess. Because <laughs> I'm going to put this on YouTube and on my podcast. So, if you guys have any suggestions or anything, let me know. And if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you're on my podcast, definitely take a listen to my other podcasts. Some of them have been deleted. <laughs> But I will continue to put them up um, as I go. So, yeah. And I just want to say thanks for being here. And I hope you guys come join me again for another video or podcast. Bye, guys. Have a blessed day.